episode 71 done and done yeah we got uh we spoke a lot about red dead in this one because the game's super awesome perfect scores yeah perfect scores vish got super uh super into the game and <laughs> yeah. ended up ended up <laughs> ended up focusing a lot more on the game than the podcast but that's cool because oh, the game's the super whole dope. idea is immersion that's true so we might drop a uh first impressions of the game not a full walkthrough because the game is way too long <laughs> but yeah that'd be cool like right. a, like a what do you call that first impressions do they call it something else just first impressions yeah preview i don't know preview all right well, we'll figure we'll figure it out we'll figure right. out what it is if you hear a lot of like scruffing that's our, our dog in the background always making an appearance anyways so um, cool merchandise yes yeah, shop.gotlightmyfire.com pick up some teas on Teespring support the podcast via these channels Vish oh like share t- uh, subscribe yeah and, <laughs> and our favorite oh video reply video reply we need some of those right actually I was thinking about this one because a lot of people watch this well, listen to this more on <laughs> iTunes than YouTube they it won't see our overlays right so uh, uh, follow us on Twitter Instagram, Herbal James for me on both handles, U R V I L J A M E S. And Vicious is 8th Sage. And I think there are two different ones. Yeah, there. Instagram is 8th Sage. Is it 8th underscore Sage? <laughs> it's like it's either 8th underscore Sage or 8th Sage. I don't, and one of them is like 8th Sage Gamer though. That's Twitter, yeah, because I always tag you in that one. So, right. uh, eighth, yeah, no, Instagram is 8th underscore skate, Sage. And uh, Twitter is 8th Sage Gamer. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll tighten up this intro for the next week. <laughs> this, you just jumped that in there. I yeah, because I was I thinking about, I was like, this. nobody, like, I was looking at the stats, and most people listen to this on iTunes versus watching it. Right. So it's like, you won't, the, the you won't even follow okay. us. It's kind of wasting it, you know. Uh, but yeah, so. Very nice. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom, and we are back with another episode of Cry Gamers. This is episode 71. 71. Yeah. And if you're watching on YouTube, you may notice that we have a super sweet game. Uh, it just came out. Red Dead Redemption 2. Is is there a subtitle to this one? No. No, so it's just Red Dead Redemption 2. Yep, exactly. But it's a prequel. Okay, okay. So, two. <laughs> so this is the regularly scheduled podcast where you talk about four things in the week that we thought were cool. And we dissect them in the Socratic way that we do. While we play games, which is why we're gamers. Yeah. Socratic gamers. All right, give me one second. I'm sneeze. <coughs> oh, jeez. Lord bless you. Thank All right, anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, I was going to uh, say something. But... For, first topic of the week is actually the game itself, with uh, Vish playing it on its release. So, yeah, I got it. Pretty uh, digital. So, man, it's so good. The game? The world is... Like, yeah, I just started... Not that long ago. I, I saw the review was like 10 out of 10 or something. Yeah, like that. it was like a perfect game. Oh, really? <laughs> that's what 10 out of 10 is, right? But like, per, um, yeah, that's true. But I mean, like, perfect game is subjective. Like like God of War got 10 out of 10 as well, right? I think it did, yeah. Yeah, so that game was really good, though. So what's so great about this game? What do you love? You well, didn't love the download time, though. That was long. No, that was fine, actually. It was like... Um, yeah, it was pretty quick for us. Our internet's kind of fast, so... Yeah, sure, but how many gigs was it? Like 80? No, 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 it was uh, 100 gigs. Oh, 100 gigs, that's, that's a lot. Damn. Yeah. Right, anyways. <laughs> no, that was like the meme going around, too, um, with Twitter. If you bought the disc version, <laughs> you want to play it, but you're, like, waiting for it to install. Oh, really? 100 gigs of it, yeah. Oh, even though you buy the CD, you still have to wait for it to install? Yeah, you still got to install it. Oh, that's kind of lame. Yeah, of course you have to. Oh, huh. It's all games like that, man. Okay. Uh, so, like, yeah, that, that, that was the funny thing. We usually buy digital, so I haven't... Yeah, because you can preload it. You should have bought digital, and you're ready to play it on that day. Right, 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 true. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so they start you off, like, in a... Like, you're running away from the city called Blackwater. Okay. So you, you, who are playing as Arthur, doesn't know what's going on. So Arthur's not the first guy, the guy from the first game? No. Okay, cool. But the the guy from the first game is in this game. Okay. John Marston. Uh, you do, like, in one of the uh, missions, early missions, you're um, 
you're, you have to go and find this guy, and nobody really cares about this guy. Okay. Nobody likes John Marston because he's like a drunk. He's like, like a weirdo. Like oh, the way, weird. way it seemed. Really? And like, because in the first game, it was like you were like awesome. You know? Yeah, because I guess something like you know we know what happens to that character, right? No, I, I do not. Oh, you don't remember? No. Oh, like he he loses his um, wife and kid. Oh, okay. And he's going after this gang. All I remember from the first game is I caught horses and I could hunt and skin them. <laughs> well, yeah, the main the main guy was was trying to find all the killers from this this gang, trying to kill them all because of what happened to his oh, that's cool. family, right? Okay, okay. But uh, his family, like in the early missions, they were trying to find him, and he kind of got lost or something. So, so anyways, you do find him, and you see them. He's already got like his face scratched. Okay. Oh, okay. From, from wolves, what it looks like. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Already, so like, but you, like, you know, when I was a kid, I always thought like, wouldn't it be so cool if I had a scar across my eye? <laughs> you know, like like Sub Zero or like Scorpion or something. Right. So I was like, if I took a knife, yeah, and just like bladed myself, okay. but then that might not be cool in the future. No. Anyway, remember when people used to shave like a piece of their eyebrow because they wanted to make it look oh, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, they yeah, had yeah, like yeah. a scar there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Why don't you just, just cut yourself, make a real scar? <laughs> just saying. All right, continue. So. uh Anyway, so that was like early missions. You're still in, in the cold area, uh-huh. uh huh, all snowy and stuff, which is kind of cool. Like the icy, the deformation of the snow as you walk on it, or you like crouch. Okay, in that's the cool. Areas. So it was pretty interesting, like tech, I guess. And then, you, is, wait, wait, is there a P function, like we spoke about in the last podcast? Uh, at least I haven't seen that yet. No. Oh, okay. So there's no like bladder. <laughs> too bad. Too bad. Next no. game. Next game. Uh, no, I guess not. It's still just the eating and. You know, like keeping your. Can you make him fat? I think you can. Ooh, but he'll cool. be like slower and stuff. Um, yeah, it'll affect you. Can you make him emaciated? What does that mean? Like you just don't don't um, feed him, and then he'll be skin and bones. I guess so. Really? I don't know. So you have to eat. Yeah, you have to eat. So you have to excrete. That's right. They didn't build that in the game. They didn't do that in the game. Oh, next game, next game. All yeah, right, that'll so, be next game. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, so like. In the beginning, like a few hours, a couple hours, it's more like still learning the game. Mm-hmm. They're showing you how to hunt, showing you like other, like the when you get the horse, like how to, you know, train it to make it higher level, like to get comfortable with you, like these sort of things. Like this is like the beginning two hours. Right. And then you start doing like more missions. You go into sit the town, like even going into the town is still you're learning like, oh, you gotta, what's in the town? Like... There's like a mail post there where you can, you know, pay off your bounties or whatever else, right? Uh-huh. Uh, so, it, like, the whole beginning is still learning the game. It's, it's still, it's still, it's a huge game. Really? There's so much to learn to, to figure, like, you know. Uh, is every blade of grass coated so that it sways in the wind individually? I don't think they can do this in this kind of world. Oh, too bad. Right. I think in the other game, that, that Samurai game will have that because. Sick. I guess it's a smaller open world. True, true. We can focus on that more. We'll learn all this. So basically, we shouldn't go to that port. Do, do you know what the story is for, like this uh, one? Right now, you're still part of the, the gang, the camp. You're trying to uh, keep the morale up and stuff like that. We don't know. Like we're still finding out what happened at Blackwater, where we ran away from. Okay. Oh, so we don't. Okay. So he, like Arthur wasn't there, so he keeps asking other people, "What happened at Blackwater?" Wait, Blackwater is is that your gang? No. No, no, no. That was a, that's a place. Okay. Uh, where they used to be, and then something happened. Used hap- to be. Uh, where the whole camp used to be. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then um, they, they left a lot of money there. They something happened at a boat, is what I hear. But then it's like what? Like he's trying to find out what happened. He wasn't there. Okay. When that stuff happened, mm-hmm. oh, he found out that we we're running away, and like they go into like the the mountain areas, uh, uh, where they're trying to get rid of the tracks and stuff. Like you know, anyways, like hi, run away basically. Right, I got you. Yeah. Like you can actually go to those mountains. Oh wow! No yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like even like what you wear, like clothing, kind of effects. So as as you were leaving the mountain areas, uh, and coming into this warmer area, it's like you're getting too hot. Because you had a winter jacket, winter coat Wait, on. Does he have like a hot meter? Like what is that? Yeah, no, it'll tell you, and your health would kind of uh, deplete. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you gotta, you gotta. So like, if you go to the 
if you go to the mountains now, I have to wear a winter coat. You'll get too cold. Like, it'll affect your health. Like, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, so now, like, it's been a few months since and they've left that area. They've made a new camp closer to the city called Valentine. So, like, it, we're still learning. Like, he doesn't know what's happened yet. <laughs> no one's really talking to him about it. But why not? Is he not the leader? He's not the leader. Oh, who is he? Uh, d he's, like, the second guy. He's the second in command? Kind of, yeah. So he should probably be filled in by the first in command. Uh, yeah, but I guess they're just busy trying to run away and, like, other things you have to do for the camp. Okay. It's kind of weird. But so we don't know. Him. Yeah, so maybe, I don't know yet why they haven't told him, but, like, yeah. All right. That's cool. It's kind of, so like, so we're just, really this is the earlying of the early starts of the story. Nice. And, like, uh, favorite part of the game? Favorite part? I mean, the music is great in this game. <laughs> Oh really? Oh, I really I love the I music. I wasn't expecting you to say music. Was yeah, it's the, the music. I think it's the music. That's oh, I should take it. Oh, let's see, see the horse making. <laughs> yeah, maybe we will. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so like, you really get muddy too. Like I was like, we got in a fight in a, uh, in like some small town. Uh huh. And the roads are really muddy, right? Like that's how it used to be back in the day when right. they didn't have asphalt. <laughs> yeah, makes too. sense. Yeah. And you really got super muddy. You're everywhere on your clothes, so you have to like go take a bath. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were saying that you'd smell in the game and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of, it's very interesting. I like, I like the shooting, too, the shooting mechanics. Um, What's so unique about the shooting mechanic? Oh, it just, it just feels really nice. Okay. Especially with the gun sounds. It just, I don't know, I just, it's hard to explain sometimes when these things you like. It just, they just hit the right points. So it's like, it's like the whole ambiance of the entire game. Is, well, yeah, I, I think what I think is cool is that you can like hide the the map so it all looks like a, oh yeah that's the other thing too right now I'm yeah right now we're playing with HUD off so yeah. and you can transfer the HUD onto the, if you got a like an iPad HUD, or whatever HUD is heads up display in case you're wondering no need to Google that right so, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah you can put that whole HUD the map and everything onto your um, phone your phone or, or yeah. whatever tablet or whatever and then you can play this game. As cinematic as possible. Yeah, that's that. That's a cool aspect of the game. I like that. Your health bar is also on the uh, HUD. Yes. On the extra. Okay. On so the on the other side. Yeah. yeah Everything. Right. Your health. Uh, your horse health as well. You have to nice. Kind of look at that. Uh, wow. So this is a very immersive experience game. How is the first person mm -hmm. mode? I haven't really played around with the first person, mm -hmm. but it does look. Better uh, than, it looks better than GTA, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for uh, sure. You, they designed it with this. For those of you listening, he switched over to the uh, first-person mode. It's okay. Mm. Uh, I don't really like it. Aim weapon? What did it say there? Oh, you going to shoot him? Uh oh All right, Let's anyways. Shoot him. Yeah, <laughs> so first-person mode is it's okay. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Yeah, I think third-person is... Oh, he actually got mad at me. All right, well, and see, so look again, at his, if you're his fall was, Oh, he's not really dead. Again, if you're listening, Bish just, is getting into a fight accidentally in the game. I don't. Yeah. See, that's why I don't like first. Uh, I'm I'm not a big fan of games that are like meant oh, to be third person. Me. Yeah. And then they're played in first person mode. Like, that's, well, I think I think it's it's a better first like person than the GTA. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's like it wasn't meant to be played in. Like, that's it, more, like, gimmicky, you know? Mm-hmm. It's cool, I guess, if you're, like, in a tavern or something and you want to, like, see it, experience it first person. But, like, I don't know. I feel like, like, first person will be saved for uh, VR in the future. I think that would be really cool. I like that he's got a satchel on. That's kind of cool because I got, like, a fanny pack. <laughs> that's basically the same thing. Right. We're yeah, both yeah, men. yeah. Hardcore. And so, he's got that knife, that hunter's knife. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool, too. So, like, yeah, whatever weapon you have on you will be on your body. Mm. Uh, so you can, like, basically, uh, where's that horse? Or oh, one. So you can add, take take weapons from your horse saddle. That's where it's all kept. So, like, you took out the rifle or this, whatever this is. And then if you're not going to use it, so let's put it away. That's cool. Yeah. So basically, if it's gonna you, be always on you. So whatever what, you have. But so another cool limited. aesthetic feature is whatever weapons you have on you, you get you, to see it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I think if you're listening to this on iTunes, you really got to check this out on YouTube because Vish is getting super uh, into the game right now. Yeah, it really, it's a visual thing too. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's kind of hard for you to explain what what's so great about the game, <laughs> but it it's definitely a good one. So um, definite must buy. Of course. Yeah. yeah All right. So we're we're gonna go with must buy <laughs> on this one. How much does it cost? Uh, well, I bought like the ultimate version or something it's called, but you can just buy the regular game, which is eighty bucks, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, and how much was the special oh, edition I know. without the CD? Oh, I think it was about 120. I think, I think that's what I've spent. And, oh, you spent 120? Yeah. Dang. On what? Oh, yeah, on, on the updated feature, yeah, you were saying. Before. I know. There, it's, it's like for the online stuff, too. Right, 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 right. But the, the, there's also a version without the game. It's just the toy. Or not toy? Is it toy? No, it's not, it's not even a toy. It's, I don't even know what that is, actually. <laughs> so don't, some collect. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So don't buy that one. No, don't buy Unless that. you're super rich. But yeah, all right, cool. Uh, oh, the thing is, if you want to ha- see the best experience of the game, mm-hmm. uh, even though the whole marketing is on PS4, it's not the best place. Like, it's still really good if you have a 4K TV and you got an Xbox One X. That's the best place. Xbox One X. Yeah, and wow, it's okay. it's at native 4K on that game. Oh, this game is on native 4K on that on that system. Okay, that's cool. So it's really good. So what I hear. So go buy an Xbox One X. And um, if you got friends on the X, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So how much better can it get? It's native 4K. It's like it's, I, I, I know, but like, like what are we missing? I would say you watch watch, watch this guy it. called Digital Foundry, and he explains it. On I was YouTube? Uh, on YouTube. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, spend lots of money on this game because this is where you're gonna live for the rest of your life. There's, yeah, for there's no point. whatever it's called. I think this is a 60 hour game, but like, there's probably more things to do. Yeah, but then we get it online. It's going to be like 10 years. I'm, I'm exploring, years of your like, life. I'm just walking around like this, which is another, like, <laughs> spent more like an hour going around and then you so haven't done anything. <laughs> this is how you're going to spend your free time, people, if you, yeah. uh, if you buy the game. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. no point in. So spend the money because you're going to enjoy the experience. Yeah. I'm sarcastic on that one. I'm just kidding. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyways, <laughs> so next topic is um, the domino effect of time. So I've, I've been like, I've been reading this book called uh, The Silk Roads. So mm-hmm. you heard of Silk Road, right? Yes. It's it's like, based on people who don't know, it's like what connected East and West. Well, it's not even East and West because East at that time wasn't, I mean, sort of West at that time, like North America, as we know, it was not in existence. It was more like Rome to Asia. Like Europe yeah, to yeah, yeah. Europe to Asia, that's what connected it, and um, yeah, that, so, I mean they call Europe the, like the West, of the its West. Time. yeah, of its yeah. time, yeah, because it is the god. All right, so I'll get into that. So um, the the Silk Roads. Funny mm-hmm. enough, the reason why they're called the Silk Roads is because silk was the most um, prominent good to be sold. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of funny because I thought it meant like. I thought it meant like lavish roads or something mm-hmm. like, but it is a literal term like Silk Roads. Right. So what what really got me, uh, and I was reading it about it yesterday. I haven't finished the book yet, but it also ties into Red Dead. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, how like things are dominoed, and we don't really know where it is we're going mm-hmm. until we're kind of there and we look back at the pieces. Yeah. You know, like little things make big differences. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so. A good example is they said that Baghdad, you remember the song Bombs Over Baghdad? Yeah. And then we'd watch like, but it's an outcast song. And then we'd watch like footage of them like, um, we'd watch footage of them like uh, sending, like shooting bombs and like it was <laughs> being destroyed and stuff. Yeah. So apparently Baghdad at the time was like the greatest city of peace and prosperity on mm-hmm. earth. And it was like the rich live there and like, et cetera, et cetera. But like how the mighty have fallen, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy to think about. It. And it's like, and what really did it in was, like, the belief system of, like, religion. Yep. So Constantine converting to Catholicism, mm-hmm. Christianity, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it yep. like, of the one small act can domino affect an entire thing. Like, even look at 9-11, right? Yeah. The act, it wasn't a small act, but the one instance of 9-11 is what triggered, um, mm-hmm. like, statewide observation. You know, they, they crack down yep. pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if you go back back further than that, it's like, well, when 
U.S. was funding Osama, that could have been the the catalyst. I mean, there were uh, Baghdad is in where again in Iraq? Uh, yeah, Afghanistan was apparently like right now. You look at Afghanistan, you're like, oh, it's like it's like uh, broken down, whatever, whatever. But it's like it's actually super. Uh, it was super industrialized for its time, mm-hmm. um, and like. It was like center of goodness, trade, and like all that. Yeah. Like it was the best city. Yeah. And now it's like done. You know, the Persians too were like the greatest empire, which is really interesting because you told me this before too. Because I was like, oh, like, um, like Rome was the, like we are Romans. You know, if you look at Western society now, we have like all the things that the Romans had mm-hmm. like neighborhoods, yeah. coliseums, UFC is basically the gladiator fights. You know, yeah, but like, but you were like, no, if you actually look back into it, Persians were the ones who influenced society, yeah, right. And they talk about it in the book, like, Persia was what it came down to is like Persia versus Rome, yeah, and like also Greece too. But like, yeah, it, it's it's like no different than let's say Russia, USA, and I wouldn't say Canada's on there, China, R- Russia, USA, and China all fighting right now. It would be like that, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and it's interesting because it's like, it's like you don't really take into account all of the actions that lead you down a road. Like it's sort of like, all right, so like a hot button issue right now is like climate change, right? Yeah, and you can't. People are like, we gotta change climate change. We gotta do like all this, all this, but it's like you don't realize that it's. It's like it's been grandfathered in. Everything you do has been made to come to this point. Yeah. You know? If you really want to stop it, you got to stop everything. Mm-hmm. You know? And I feel like like that's impossible because you're undoing thousands of years of history that got us to this point. You could change it, of course, like people like Elon Musk, but then that's another tipping point, right? You just got to keep tipping it. In diff- yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, you have to change it. Like, we got to con- – like – you got to make something great that people want to buy it, you know? Like, for, for sure, for sure. But, like, like um, you remember that game, like, uh, the, the paddles? Like, there's, like, um, remember that old game on the, on the, the uh, what do you call it? Where you, like, pinball? Okay. Remember pinball machines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, um, maybe just ride around the forest, bro. <laughs> like, it's, like, distracting me. Um, the the pinball machine, remember? And then, like, you'd hit, like, the paddles, and then it would, mm-hmm. like, bounce around and then, like, hit a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, like, it's almost like that's sort of, like, how history is, you know? It would, like, hit one thing, and then, like, it would spiral out. Right. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'll just mess with my mind. Right <laughs> yeah. And, like, the reason why I said it, it uh, tied into Red Dead is because... Um, the the red dead thing like where where we are is like the industrial yeah, yeah, revolution yeah. just before just before the industrial revolution yeah and then like you're going to end up um seeing the product like you, you look at it right now and you see like small towns and then you don't realize that this is going to become giant cities in exactly the yeah, yeah 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 so yeah what you do matters but yeah this time was uh, pretty bad for the roads especially when you're in small towns it's like this yeah, yeah, for sure. Pure mud. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. Like, uh, after reading that book and then even, like, looking at this stuff, I was, like, walking yeah. around downtown, I was like, wow, who knew yeah. that it was going to become like this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, history's nuts. That, that's why I was, like, saying uh, there's <clears throat> there's no plan, but there is patterns. Right. Right? Like, the universe exploded from the big bang of course there will be it yeah. didn't plan anything no. it wasn't like oh i'm gonna create human no, it was just no, a no. patterned effect that's yeah. going outwards yep. you know it's almost like fractals or like like mm-hmm. the ripples in a pond you know right and that's like life yeah anyways so your next topic the pokemon go killer oh snap i was just talking about how awesome pokemon go is it's just being sarcastic though i was just so it's not really gonna kill. Oh, it's not. Oh, you had me. <laughs> no, I said. Like, oh no, it's such a good <laughs> game. You know, uh, um, my cousin, well, my aunt, she was uh, playing. <laughs> Sorry. She just got into Pokemon. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and she was saying how like, uh, she she didn't walk before, but like now she's walking to get these eggs. Oh, that's great. You know, and like, 
It forced people to go outside. Oh, I, I heard. Uh, I heard that they're working on um, where it'll work in the background, like, uh, you, like the you know the, how the iPhone already takes Counts. your steps. Yeah, 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 that's way better because like. Yeah, I I, I would battery. want that because uh, I don't killer. always. Yeah, yeah. So they're doing that. They're working on that. That's one. cool. That's cool. That's what I just heard. Uh, anyway, so the one that's going to be an iPhone or iPhone killer, uh, Pokemon killer, it's called Follow JC Go. What? What? It's <laughs> Wait, repeat the title? Follow what? Follow JC Go. Like, yeah. Okay. No, it's just... It's random? They're trying to... I'll, I'll tell you what it means. It's... JC means Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> wow, double random. Okay. So, someone is working on... Uh, I think it's already out, actually, in some of these countries. Um... It's just to get the Generation Z into this understanding more of uh, Catholicism. Christ. And you're looking around, and you yeah. walk, and you're trying to catch saints. So, okay, all right, so, so quick, quick pause, quick <laughs> pause. So, like, going back to the whole, like, uh, Silk Rose thing, they talk about this. Um, the Jews and the uh, Muslims, they were all, they, they kind of banded together, you know, like, um, so, like, I, I read the Quran, it was saying how, like, oh, this is not, oops. This is not the correct, uh, like, way because, like, you're believing too much in, like, Jesus and you're believing too much in, um, uh, what's his name, Moses. But it's really about, the, like, God, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and, uh, and during the time where, where Muhammad was, like, in, in Mecca, right, there were yeah. a lot of Christian churches popping up. And, of course, like, of course he's going to be, like, anti-christian because you're like in, you want to probably get your thing, on his yeah you're encroaching yeah. on his territory yeah so it's like when i see stuff like this now it's like but you don't realize that like if i like there's no way to fact check things back in the day no. right so like if i was like oh i i am a descendant of christ of mm-hmm. course if i get enough people to believe an idea which is like marketing right it's like if i can get enough people to believe it, it becomes true Right. I read this book called uh, All Marketers Are Liars. And the funny part about the book is that you're all marketers and you're not lying. Like um, the profession of marketing isn't about lying. It's about making you lie to yourself. Right. So it's like you're going to like cognitive dissonance, right? It's like, it's like, well, if 500 people say that he's the returning of Christ, <laughs> he must be. And then more people believe and the more people believe it. Yeah, and you yeah, get yeah, like yeah. a snowball effect. Yeah. So like when I see like the jc go thing it's like <laughs> it's just trying to be relevant no they are yeah that's, that's like, what it is yeah they're just trying to get the new generation to to to, to, to yeah to into religion because they know it's declining exactly that's what i'm saying and, and what i find kind of funny too is like um they're saying like uh buddhism is more logical right because it's yeah. like it's all about your mind yeah. and like oh the only person that dies is your mind right mm-hmm. um but like the reason why these these afterlife religions, as mm-hmm. you put it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are so popular is because people don't like the idea of death. But once you supersede the concept of death, and you're like, oh, people, people die. My energy's still going to be here, though. It's like, like it's not like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like my, I don't like my mind's not going to be here, sure, but like, no, I know, I know, yeah. It's, it's know. when the people that you left behind, it's with them, right? Right, but but so. then, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But but like. But because people are so afraid of that concept, then things like, oh, you'll go to heaven are, like, super popular. Mm-hmm. Because it's, like, then it gives you an out to the biggest fear in life, which yeah, is yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing more scary than you're going to die. Yeah, I think it's, it, it does the opposite. <laughs> which one? Like, when, yeah, when you add the heaven in there, it's like, oh. For us, but, I mean, think about it back then when there was no internet. No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. People For were us. freaking that's, out, That's right? true. Yep, yep. Oh, and, and one, one thing it said, too, in the book as well, uh, sorry, side note, but um, uh, all the religions actually took from one another. And I know that's one thing you were saying, but it was, it was evident in the Silk Roads because oh, yeah. he, was saying, he was saying, like, if you look at Hinduism, Christianity, mm-hmm. Judaism, mm-hmm. and uh, the Chinese religion, mm-hmm. they all have halos <laughs> representing the same thing. And it's like, yeah, because on the Silk Road, they were sharing their knowledge of what the religion was. Yes. And they would just be like, oh, I like that part of yours. I like that part of yours. Yeah, yeah, but again, we don't we don't think about it. It's like because it's happening in that moment. It's not until like thousands of years later can you look back and see the trends. And yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's really what happened. It had nothing to do with like 
you know what I mean? Like me yeah, yeah, talking yeah. to you, like let's say you and I are different religions, and then I'm like, oh, this is in my religion. You're like that's cool. And then you start telling it to your mm. people. Yeah. Then like, oh, it's our little dog coughing. But oh. but then um, <laughs> but then that's what spirals out, and people start thinking of you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the little things is yeah. what I mean. It's like yeah. little things. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying Pokemon Go? Yeah. So. <laughs> And so instead of like they don't have any gyms and stuff because of course what are they you know battle saints against saints, just, just devils, you get to fight the devil. No, actually they didn't add that in. Uh, I don't I don't think they're gonna do that. <laughs> it's just cool. uh, it's just like the it's 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 replaced combat elements are replaced by um, just philosophical questions. Oh, that's kind of cool. That pair the players will have to answer when they come across saints and other biblical names. Yeah, it's not gonna do too well. <laughs> you're, you're tapping into a very small market. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. It, it came out, I think, in like Italy and like that area. It's not here yet. See, that makes sense because in Italy, it's like they're still predominantly. Yeah, so it's playable in in. I guess you can still get it now, but it's. Uh, but currently only playable in Spanish, Italian, or Portuguese. Oh. English version are reportedly on the way, so they're working mm. on it. How's it doing? I don't know. It just came out. I guess oh, it's just okay. like. That's here's an interesting. interesting Pokemon Go killer. That. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I don't think it's going to do... So maybe in those countries because they're still... See, like, it's nationalistic pride, right? Yeah. So over there, it's like it's it's still cool to be those religions, right? But, like, here in North America, where, which also... I, actually, yeah, even in Europe, I mean, it's declining in Europe a lot. For so sure, for sure. But still you, you could still, you could still claim nationalistic pride. But, but like, we were... We're the first country like um, not really us but america was the first country that was founded off of not secularism yeah yeah right yeah. like there is no like there's a division between church and state and i think they knew that mm. you know what i mean like i think the founding fathers were like well yeah yeah they, they like they knew that. we don't want to be like britain maybe that's in the book i don't know but we don't want to be like britain we don't want to be like you know china we don't want to be like all these religious countries let's be the first non Governed by God, country. Yeah, I yeah, that's really cool. It's very. I mean, they they, they wrote that in their yeah constitution, or whatever. It's like, but it is like freedom of religion too. For so sure. Yeah, exactly. Be whatever yeah, you but, want. But there's no, nothing governing. But nothing like, to. Yeah, yeah, nothing like nationalistic. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're really church and state yeah. are separate. I think that's that's pretty cool. Like we're humans are a weird thing, and and the more I read about like history books and stuff, I don't read like like the academic history books because they're so boring but I read like the summary <laughs> type book like the Silk Roads where they present it as a story yeah 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 you know you're reading about it and you know it happened they're just collecting right. the facts in a way that's more entertaining mm -hmm. so but they're thick though they're like so long because obviously they're covering a lot yeah but um, I feel like the more you learn about your past mm -hmm. the more you realize that humans are a crazy species and it's like we don't know what's going on yeah I mean Stuff we've done in I, I heard that I heard a thousand years exactly yeah I heard this once so we went like mushroom farming yesterday and like uh, not magic mushroom farming which would have been kind of cool but uh, mushroom like actual mushroom farming <laughs> and um, yeah. uh, I think his name is Paul Stamets yeah he's like a mushroom guy and he said that we are we are basically the byproduct of mushrooms like human beings right yeah 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 and it's like it kind of makes sense. Because it's like if you look at us like bacteria, you know. Right, right, right. But if you look at bacteria like that, then you're going to be like, wow, we're just a part of this whole network chain of like mm -hmm. stuff that's chaotic, doesn't know what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. We're just trying to survive. Like things like climate change is like, yeah, we're just trying to keep ourselves alive through that. Right. You know. Yep. But like the cockroach doesn't care. Because the cockroach, apparently, I was reading this in a book, apparently the, cock, the cockroach can live for, like, a week without its head, and it only dies because no water. Oh, yeah. very interesting. It, I, I, didn't, I thought they could can, even, like, survive, sur like, a nuclear blast or something. Yeah, yeah, and it could survive eating only glue. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's crazy. That's the best designed. And they, they adapt super well. Like, yeah, they, they can survive, like, uh, nuclear blasts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, probably not the actual, like, explosion, but, like, the radiation from it. Right. Yeah. It's just weird. It's weird to think about. But, yeah, so we're we're looking at life through a very narrow lens, our own lens. And only when you, like, expand beyond that lens, 
You, you know when they say like, oh, you got to become super conscious? I think that's really what it means. Right. Where it's like you have to look beyond your own perspective mm-hmm. and then you see life for how it really is. Yeah. Because if you're looking at life through your own perspective, it's subjective. But if you look at it through other people's perspective, it becomes more objective. Although it's still subjective because you're still looking at it through your perspective, through their perspective. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But like it's, it's better than being narrow-minded, narrow-focused. Yeah. So I think I'm going to download this JC Go and uh, start cracking away on some religious... No, I'm not going to do that. Would you play it? Is it free? Uh, I would assume it should be free. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm just assuming it's free. I don't oh. Know. I don't know. I thought you said, let's go to the washroom, because you were looking at the game. I was like, huh? I did say that? I, I, I heard it wrong, I guess. All right, anyways. I think I just mumbled up my words. Yeah, because we're still thinking about the, uh, the bladder control... Um, video game option you guys gotta put that in a video game you gotta you gotta put defecation as a as a must in the next <laughs> game just like this heat and cold thing right yeah, yeah it'll gotta make it more human it'll, it'll happen it's like incremental changes. yeah exactly yeah, yeah for sure that, that, then it'll be like look back on this podcast they called it <laughs> you know there have been a couple moments in my life where I'm like I'm sure many people have done this too but it's like actually this ties into my next topic. Okay. So um, there's been a moments in my life where it's like I'll say something that's kind of like out of the box. Like I'll, I'll like uh, so example um, when I was in university, they were like, "Oh, you have to come up with a product that you have to market," and I was like, "Okay, let's create the easiest thing." What do people like? You just look at the need. This is my this is my approach. You look at the need and then you satisfy the need to the people. That's marketing, right? Mm-hmm. You tell them how they need it. That no, it's not just marketing, but that was the easiest way to. A complete the assignment so like so like i was like let's just offer let's create the product of wi-fi on buses i think they had that no no no. but it was, it was like 10 years ago not 10 it was like seven years ago when i was mm-hmm. in school and it wasn't there yet yeah, yeah, yeah they didn't have wi-fi so like when i said it they were all like no that's impossible it couldn't work i was like no no but you just look at the satellites and i was trying to explain it to them but they were like no it wouldn't work so we went with something like super dumb like like a health food chain or something, something, something dumb, right? And I was like, uh, this I, is so boring. Wait, like, this is such you, a boring yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. You why know what I mean? Like, you, no, of course, anything can be done. I know, but but they weren't like techies, right? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I hang out with, I hung out with a lot of techie people, so mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm sure this could be done, blah, blah, blah. And I explained to them. Uh, so that came, became a reality, yeah. right? And then um, one of my other propositions, aside from the internet Wi-Fi thing, is um, auto-translate. Like, in that book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, they had a slug that you put in your ear. Yeah. And then, like, it would translate whatever it is that people are talking. Like, any language would be reverted to English. Mm-hmm. Right? So I was like, okay, well, can you just do an earpiece and then you know those auto-type things? So I was like, we, why don't we market that? Like, let's create a translator earpiece. And they're like, no, that's impossible. The tech wouldn't work. I'm like, all you have to do is just get, like, an auto-recite. <laughs> it's already program. there now, right? It kind of- it, it's already there. But, but back then, I was like, yeah, logically, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get an auto-recite. You get a translator program, and then you just recite back. You know what I mean? It's like it's a basic. Yeah, and it's seems that's pretty a funny, obvious. Yeah, and they were like, "No, that's impossible. It would never work." Well, <laughs> I'm like, "All right, guys, let's go with your stupid little like health chain thing." And then it became like this really long, arduous project because we had to research a bunch of other companies. You know, anyways, it's right. my little gripe. It would have been easier because because there's no research on the market. You just make it up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Let's just make up the project. It'll be so much easier than researching and then writing it." Right. Just make it up from your head and write it. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> people people need to learn how to hack the system. Yeah. I mean, even even said like, oh, let's make electric cars. No, that's not possible. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, come on, guys. Anything's possible. You gotta figure it out. Yeah. Anyways, so um, that that's kind of like a long segue into my final topic, <laughs> okay. which is like, what what makes greatness? Okay. Okay. And I was I was. I was pondering this yesterday on my drive up to the, the mushroom farm, and also I heard it first on the Joe Rogan podcast. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, Kelly Slater, he's like the world's like most famous best best surfer, right? And then Joe Rogan's like, well, how come you how come you um, how come you became like this amazing surfer, right? And he's like, I just did the things that like nobody else really did. Like all my friends, they were amazing surfers too. But then they all wanted houses, they all wanted kids, and like yeah. they wanted to settle down. So they all did that while I didn't do that, and here we are. 
Yeah. And I realized like what greatness really is is just like diverging from the norm. Like when when you do things that other people do, then you become like everyone else. But then when you do things that are not like everyone else, then you you become like uh, oh, this dog is very <laughs> upset. You become um, different. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like you. So like, and I started to see this thing when um, me and uh, me and my friend were doing like full time martial arts, and like everyone was like, oh, you're like living the dream. You guys are like these amazing martial artists not like doing whatever you know i'm a phase person so i go like hardcore into things yeah. but you know what i mean and then like but then they didn't really know what it was like they didn't know the like the drawbacks <laughs> like the lack of money the, yeah the, like how am i gonna train like yeah. the hard work that went into it you know the 15 hour days you know they didn't see that but all they saw through their perception was somebody that wasn't like everyone else and then in their minds we became great in their minds, yes. In their, in their, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So what is greatness? It's really just a story you tell yourself. Yes. Like there is no such thing as greatness. True. Mm, that's a very good point. Right? Mm-hmm. But it's just things that people don't associate with the norm. Yes. And then they think they're great. Yes. Like Elon Musk was like, oh, I heard this. This is a really, all right. Speaking of Elon Musk, you know the so simulation. You're bringing up the Elon Musk today. Yeah, because right? I love Elon. He's the man. <laughs> uh, so you know simulation theory? Yes. Like how he believes in simulation theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what they're saying on this. Oh, hold on, this dog is upset. I'm just gonna give her a little love. Give her a little love. All right. So, um, what they're saying in the for the Elon Musk thing yeah. and his simulation theory. Mm. Of course, he would believe in simulations. He's a super genius <laughs> that created amazing things in this world. Yeah. And like, so of course the world will look like a video game to him. He's like, yeah, I should create some. Uh, I should create some electric cars. I think I could do it. And then he does it, and he's like, wow, look at this. It's happening. Okay. So if you were in a world where everything you thought of became a reality and you became the super billionaire that could own anything, would you not think that you're in a rigged system where it's like, uh, this doesn't seem real? You know what I mean? Like, of course, that would be the impetus for his thought. Oh, she's I whining. guess. No, really, like, think, think about it. If you, were, if you were living this life and everything you ever wanted became real. But I don't know if you thought like that, though. No, 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 no. It's like a subconscious. They, they were saying that on the podcast. I was like, that's a that's an interest. I don't know if it's real or not. <laughs> that's what like, I'm saying. Of, of yeah. course, his simulation theory. Because he could be just thinking a lot about it. And no, no, it just yeah, makes yeah. more sense. No, no. Of course, of course, his simulation theory, the way he presents it, is obviously correct. But what is the impetus for even? Oop. What is? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> she got trapped in my headphones. Simulations. All right. So what, what is? What is the impetus for even thinking that there could be a simulation? It's him being like, this is a little ridiculous. Like, what, like, what are we doing in this world? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the thought. Mm-hmm. The impetus for me was when I saw The Matrix. And then I was like, oh, that could be a reality. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's not that you think of it in a logical way. It's like, all right, all right hold on. <laughs> You're crying. Here, I'll bring you down. All right. You run. You run. Okay. So, um... The, the whole, like, it, it's sort of like the, the history thing, right? Like, one thing breeds out into another thing. So it's like there's some starting point that made you, like, uh, what do you call this? Uh, confirmation bias. So when you have an idea in your head, you look for sources to affirm that idea. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was I saw The Matrix, and I was like, okay, like, we probably are in a simulation. And then I started seeing different things that would explain to me why we could be in a simulation. So for him, what they're saying is like, it could be his reality of like getting everything he wants that makes him believe it's a simulation and then just like confirmation bias. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Did I lose you on that one? No, no, no. I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. But yeah. you'd have to ask Elon. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I, those, this was a right. digression that's not actually about greatness, but I'm just saying. Uh, that, right. like, yeah, it, yeah. I heard it on a podcast. I was like, oh, that's pretty, it's pretty interesting. To hear it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's also... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, we'll never know. Yeah, so diverge from the norm and be whatever it is you want because at the end of the day, if you're like everyone else, you're just going to be another piece of mycelium. What? Mushroom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you got to explain that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mushroom that goes against the norm that everyone's like, hey, he's not a mushroom, bro. He must be special. Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> All right, anyways. And then convince a bunch of people 
So all right, if you all right, let's deconstruct this. So when I said like people because we are full time martial arts people were like, Oh, like they're diverging against the norm, they're they're special. Jesus was probably like, Hey man, I'm just gonna go like the thirteen lost years of Jesus. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, go yeah. study. They're like, Wow, he's so special. And mm. then ten people thought he's special. Twenty people thought he's special. And he started thinking he was special. He started saying you know there's a pivotal right, yeah, point. Yeah, that's true. There's yeah, a pivotal point in the book, yeah. uh, if you uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you read Matthew, <laughs> the the most positive one like, because it goes progressively jar- darker, you know. Okay. Um, when you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, by the time you get to John, John the Baptist, he's like, Jesus is crazy in that one. Like, it's different. It's like four different renditions. We have a podcast where I talk all about the Bible because mm-hmm. I read it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, anyway, anyways. So the first one it was the most positive. So, like, in the beginning of that one, Sermon on the Mount, I'm like, oh, it's like everything he's saying is really nice, you know? And then he hits this point where he's like, I am the way, I am the sword, you must follow me. I have come not to give, like, yeah. truth, but to bring the sword, you know, to people, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And it was like, it got to your head. You know what I mean? Like, 10 people believe you? That's cool. 20 people believe you? But when, when 300 people start believing you, you're going to mm-hmm. get into this feedback loop of, like, I am the best ever. Right. Yeah. Watch your emotions. All right, till next time. <laughs> Just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We we should not play. This game. <laughs> you're like, you're like super into the game, but yeah. it's 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 too uh, immersive. That's why I was like, just ride around, uh, like. Yeah, but I wanted to show the town. But most people so listen to it on uh, iTunes. I know. I know. So I, like, I want to show you the town. Yeah, but <laughs> I understand that. Yes, yes, you're correct. Yes, you do want to show me the town, but we're, <laughs> we're doing two different things simultaneously. I know. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's a beautiful town, though. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> good, good job, coders. Yeah. All right. I mean, this is only the one town I've been to. For sure, for sure. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Where... That's right. That's right. Yeah. So anyways, until next time, buy the game and then add Vish on the game. Play with them. Okay. Because this is where he'll be. This is where he'll be. Until next time. <laughs> yes. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.